guys, it's Michael, KD8TUT, up here in Lake Michigan, Beach, Michigan. This is Meanwhile in the Ham Shack, Episode 2, The Quickening. As you can see, in celebration, I'm wearing a Star Wars t-shirt because I'm a complete nerd, I know it, and I'm flying my flag. Okay? Get over it. So, uh, today is, uh, uh, this is a good, uh, this is a good day for me. Um, I have a friend, uh, uh, fellow ham, K9ZAV, Mel, who's out of Chicago. He's also a member of the 220 megahertz guys club that I belong to. And, uh, he, he and I have been working together on ham projects now for weeks, which has been really cool. And, um, so one of the projects we did was we got we've we've worked to get my antennas up. He's helped me get wires up in trees, which is fantastic. And he has an overarching interest in software defined radio. And for me, being a systems engineer, interfacing a computer with anything is a piece of cake. So I'm one of these guys that just hey, it's no problem. It's working. I'm happy. Um I like computers and I like radios and I like mixing them together. Your mileage may vary. Um, my biggest problems in radio don't have anything to do with the computer. Uh, and uh, so anyway, we've been working on a Mel one out and purchased a Flex 5000. Not this one. This one's mine and it works. But the one that Mel got did not work. And we went through all kinds of hack. Uh trying to get this thing functional he'd bring it out it didn't receive we were able to a b against my working unit and I, it was just a mess and it would the radio went back to flex systems then it came back supposedly repaired then it still didn't work and it was just it was it was a never-ending treadmill of oh my god this sucks and uh so finally, uh, you know, Mel decided to give up the ghost on it, canceled the deal on the radio, got it back to the original owner, and started looking around for a different radio and made a decision on a radio. And so this isn't about what radio he chose. Uh, whatever radio he chose, uh, as long as he's happy with it, I'm cool with it. Uh, I happen to like the radio that he got. Um, but so I want to show you, this is Mel unpacking his new radio. Seriously, check this out. So here we have my friend Mel from the 220 megahertz guys who's setting up his HF station in our second operating position for the very first time. So look at the look on the guy's face. He's like a kid in a candy store. Now this is an experienced ham. This guy's been licensed for a while. Uh, I'm going to play another clip. He talks about what radios he's, he's owned in the past. And uh, you know that look on his face i you know it's like the quickening i love it it's fantastic but would the radio work so he got the radio uh and he's he's not a desktop computer guy he's 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 an it dude but he's not in the desktop he doesn't he, he wouldn't understand a desktop or a windows server uh, he might work with linux a little bit that kind of thing so uh i had experienced that he didn't have so i brought the radio up here to set it up and we we set up his computer and everything to to run this stuff and get it ready so the computer was ready i had my big antenna antenna ready for him so he could plug in and so here's his comments after a, a functional deployment of this new radio of his take it away mel well you actually have a functional radio what does it feel like to have a functional radio after all these years the first word i can think of is different different yeah oh i got to hear more about that how is it different well, what's different this one is working and i'm really impressed at uh how easily it installs and how easy it is to operate um mm -hmm. it's just really really impressive and one of the reasons I wanted to go to software defined radio was because I'm not a very good knob twister and I can't tune in very well. Mm -hmm. So with this, I've got a visual cue and I can uh, adjust it very easily and get the pitch and tone of a voice that I want. 
and basically I can see across the band where there's some activity instead of spending all my time twisting. Right, right. So what was the radio? Now you've been a ham for a while, and you're just coming back to the hobby. What what was the uh, what was the radio that you had previously that you worked CW on? Uh, I worked. Uh, I had Drake Twins, TR fours and mm -hmm. RX four, and it was a, really a pretty good radio, and I enjoyed it. Isn't that isn't that a famous radio, the Drake? It, yeah, could could be. Yeah. I didn't know it was uh, famous at the time I did it, <laughs> but it, it worked pretty well for me. Uh, right. I bought it from someone that uh, worked at the ARRL, uh, Jim Bartlett, which one was a K1TX. Right. And one of my other mentors was uh, Drew, and he was K9CW, and, and you could uh, imagine he liked working CW. Right, right. Uh, I'm thinking of trying to get back into CW and see how well I can do with it. Well, I know you and I are talking about working digital modes across Lake Michigan. Right. And I think Olivia would be a great protocol for that. It's very slow, but even when there's little or no signal, Olivia can pull uh, the information out uh, because of the way the protocol is constructed. Um, so just to give you an idea here, uh, Mel has been working to get a functional radio, and he had purchased one uh, from another ham online. And the, the radio had all kinds of problems. And uh, yes. we were up here about five times. We were trying to work the problems out. And uh, they couldn't... They, in, in other words, it ended up being a loss so, uh, as far as whether the radio was going to be usable or not. So it went back to the original owner. And so what he did was he, after a great deal of research, bought an Apache NN100. Uh, and uh, so... He just received this. You got this yesterday. Yes. And so he just pulled. He just he just ran his tail out of Chicago to my ham shack to hook up to my big antenna, and I'm so happy for him because he's got he made a contact. So you were able to transmit and 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 get out and that kind of thing. So this is the this is the beginning of the rebirth of Mel the Ham. Power Station K9ZAV. <laughs> and there you go. Now, you know, I, I, I realize this video might seem a little bit hokey, but this is what ham radio is about. You know, uh, communications, technical people working together on an avocation they love, finding a solution to a problem, everybody helping each other. This is what it's all about. And, you know, I wish I would have taken some video of our field day because I thought it was an outstanding uh, uh, cooperative uh, event. There were bumps, as there is in every, other, every field day operation, but it was like this. It was a collaboration of smart people doing things and accomplishing a goal. So we got Mel on the air. So Mel is in Chicago right now, uh, probably trying... <laughs> <laughs> trying to get rid of the power line noise. Sorry, Mel. Uh, and uh, uh, he's functional, you know? And uh, that that is fantastic. Now, uh, he would have figured it out on his own eventually, but I'm glad I was able to help him. And uh, the joy on his face, uh, uh, I just wanted to show that to people. And yeah, I had his permission to do this. He, he, was, he was cool with it. Uh, it's, it's not like I just grabbed a bunch of video and went, ha-ha, you're on the Internet. But uh, to me, these kinds of things are what ham radio is about. You know, I, I'm totally jazzed. This this happened yesterday for me, and it made me happy enough and jazzed enough that I threw on a Star Wars T-shirt and uh, made funny noises on a microphone just for you. So thank you very much for watching. This is Meanwhile in the Ham Shack. We'll have some other episodes up real soon because we got a lot of material. But it's uh, uh, a pleasure to do them anyway. We'll catch you later. I'm KD8TUT. Bye now.